Hello, I'm Gail Ross, welcoming you to Testimonies of Triumph. It's a show about hope and faith and trusting God's Word. Can you see yourself living in victory in every area of your life? No sickness, no addictions or fears, no financial problems. Well, that's the life that God wants you to have. Hello, I'm Gail Ross, and this is Testimonies of Triumph. Are you looking for some encouragement today? Maybe even some hope in a tough situation that's going on in your life? Well, this is the right program because we're here today to encourage you to trust God and trust in God's Word. Why? Because God is faithful to His Word, and it doesn't return void, but accomplishes where He sends it and prosper where He pleases. A friend of mine calls this program the message of hope, and I like that. Recently, I had the opportunity to interview syndicated columnist, author, and Fox News contributor Cal Thomas. You'll love his wisdom and humor. Before we join that interview, my viewers know that I always like to challenge you with a question. And my question today is, do you have a conquering spirit? When you know who you are in Christ, you start to develop a conquering spirit. You know what the Word of God says about your circumstances. Even though the enemy is screaming at you about your finances or your health or even your children who may have gone astray, you're trusting God and trusting God's Word. When, when that happens and we put into action the scripture in Romans 8.37 that reads, We are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. The word conquer in the Greek is a compound word. The first part meaning above and beyond. The second part means to overcome or conquer. But when they are put together, we see why the Holy Spirit tells us why we are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. This word tells us that we don't just win the victory, not just ordinary victory, but we are super victorious in all things through our life in Christ. Christ's love for us is present and active in every moment of our life. That is such an exciting promise to us believers. When we truly get this, no matter what the enemy is throwing at you or screaming in your ear, the threat perception shrinks considerably with the reality of who you are in Christ. And here's how you know if you're listening to the voice of the enemy. Do you feel condemned? Do you feel hopeless in your circumstance? Do you feel depressed? Do you hear a voice that says you'll never get well? Your kids will never serve the Lord? Your husband will never get saved? Those are not the words of your Abba Father. Let me say it this way. You can't lose when you know who you are in Christ, when you understand that God is on your side. When the truth of God's word is your reality, then you will boldly say that no weapon fashioned against you will prosper. Hebrews 10, 23 reads, Hold fast to your confession of faith without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. One last scripture that I want to read is Romans 8, 32, and it reads, he who spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? He gave us the best. He's withheld nothing from you. His son was given for you and exchanged life. Why would we ever doubt that God's promises are not for us when all the promises of God are yes in him and in him, amen. And friend, that's a hallelujah. So please stay tuned because we'll be back in 30 seconds. For a love offering of just $12.99, Gail would like to send you a copy of her new book, From Glimpses to Hope. To receive your copy, go to her website at www.gailrossministries.com or send a check or money order to Gail Ross Ministries, 6900 Daniels Parkway, Suite 29, Fort Myers, Florida, 33912. And I'm back, and I've got Jennifer Mallon from Christian Family Church on the set with me again. Jennifer, always happy to have you with me. Oh, I love being with you. Thank you. I recently had the opportunity, as I mentioned in the opening, to interview Cal Thomas. He is a 40-year veteran in Washington, D.C., nationally uh, syndicated columnist. He is an author, radio commentator, and he's going to be sharing some really insightful things about Washington, about his faith, and about a new book that's coming out. So let's go to that interview now, and then Jennifer and I will be right back. 
And my special guest today from Washington, D.C. is Cal Thomas. Cal, thank you for joining me on the program. My pleasure. A 40-year veteran, broadcast news, print, publishing. You've authored many books. You write columns in 400 different newspapers twice weekly. Is that correct? That's right. All right, and you've written, authored many, many books. I'm going to keep at it until, the, until I get it right, yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about your latest book that's going to be out April 1st. Yeah, no but, fooling. But before we do that, we want to talk a little bit about your personal life. Mm. We want to talk about your faith walk. Were you raised in a Christian home? Well, it was a nominal Christian home. My parents took me to a building called church, but like many people, um, there was no... Bible reading, no prayers before dinner. You know, you went to church on Sunday morning for an hour, and the rest of the week you were on yeah. your own. Yeah. My parents, uh, I made sure of their salvation before they died, and uh, but um, I was, uh, I met uh, some people through my wife doing some volunteer work at the National Prayer Breakfast Office, and they uh, they took me to a little prayer breakfast where I heard for the first time that I can recall about the possibility of everybody having a personal relationship with mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. And then I got invited to a Bible study. I'd never studied the Bible. And I began to read and hear things that I never recalled hearing before. And I said, you know, I need to find out more about this because I was pursuing a career in uh, broadcast journalism at the time and believed the great American dream as it's sold to us that if you make a lot of money and buy a lot of stuff, and achieve a certain level of fame, then you'll be happy. Mm -hmm. Well, I was on my way to all of those things, but I was less and less happy. And so then I met Jesus of Nazareth, and uh, he completely uh, turned my attitude and life around. That's great. Yeah. And you've raised four adult children. Right? Yes, they weren't adults at the time, but And yes, not when you yeah. were raising no, them. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and would it be stretching if we ask you how many grandchildren you have? Uh, we have uh, uh, 11 with one on the way, and probably be the last one, I think. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Um, new book. Mm. What works? Yes. Common sense solution for a stronger America. Right. Oh my goodness, we need help. Well, the premise of the book is based on a verse in Ecclesiastes. There's nothing new under the sun. That's right. Everything you think has been thought before. Everything you do has been done before. So uh, I'm asking that we stop this sound biting of each other. Uh, the Republicans, Democrats, liberals, conservatives, you're ruining America, now you're ruining America, right. and focus on what it actually produces results. We know what works, we have a past, we didn't right. just crawl out of a cave, we don't have to invent the wheel or discover the use of fire. So let's go past the parties. If a liberal idea works and promotes the general welfare, I'm for it. If a conservative idea works promoting the general welfare, I'm for that. So this, I think, is a third way that will cut through the kind of animosity we've seen in the gridlock in Washington and focus on what most Americans, who are not politicians, who are involved in the political life of this country, really want for their tax dollars. They're overpaying for government they're not getting. That's right. Uh, did you ever want to run for political office? I had that thought once, but I uh, took two aspirin and laid down for a while, the feeling went away. <laughs> yeah. How has Washington changed in the last 40 years? Well, it's gotten bigger, more expensive, uh, more contentious, more polarized. Yes. But there are people who are interested in keeping us divided. They make a lot of That's money. Right. They uh, get their own TV shows. They have highly successful uh, radio programs. Many of them are my friends, and I agree with a lot of what they say. But we have the kind of media now where you tune in to those outlets that only reinforce what you already believe. There's no growth, there's no opportunity to really speak to and persuade or convince someone who believes differently from that's you right. uh, of uh, your position or why it's correct. I think that's a, a great danger in this country, and um, it's, it doesn't produce growth. It certainly doesn't uh, produce uh, converts to your point right. of view, right. and it, it's not really helpful to America. But a lot of this is a reaction, of course, to the liberal media, which kept conservative and especially Christian voices out, right. and whenever they addressed them, they did so in stereotype. So I, I'm certainly not blaming the conservative media, because I have a part in it myself, but uh, I do think that, you know, like a gasoline station, you pull in and you fill up every day with the ideology that you already believe in. How do you think, as a Christian, do you reconcile your faith with the political climate in Washington, such as abortion, which has, of course, been for many decades now, but 
same-sex marriage, and how do we reconcile our faith with that? Well, I don't, I, it's not a question of reconciling our faith because I think we have two different kingdoms that are headed in two different directions. Right. Uh, you have the verse near the end of Revelation, let those who are holy continue to be holy, let those who continue to be bad continue to be bad, let those who do good continue to do good. So I think the, all of this is in Scripture, in both Testaments, that uh, the world is winding down. We don't know right. how many years we have left, only God knows. Uh, but those who are part of the kingdom of God are headed in a different direction. And the unsaved, the unregenerate, do what you would expect them to do. Paul the Apostle said they invent ways of doing evil. Exactly. And uh, they call uh, black white and white black and good That's evil right. and evil good. That's right. So uh, the, the answer to that, of course, is for the follower of Jesus, is to introduce as many people as we can to him. And he's the one who changes the inside, yeah. and that takes care of the outside. So I have people I've had the privilege of leading to Christ who used to be pro-choice on abortion, and now they're pro-life because they've been transformed by the renewing of their minds. That's right. This is not going to come through the political system. It's going to come through a change of heart. Amen. Have you ever in 40 years seen an administration that seems so disengaged from the people? Uh, no, I really haven't. Uh, and I, but I think you know, leadership is a reflection of followership. Mm. And, uh, and what we have now is a generation that has grown up doesn't know anything about commitment in marriage, seen parents divorcing, s feeling that they don't want to go through that, so they just live together. There's no shame about anything anymore. Uh, 47, I think, percent of babies born in America, the ones that are born, are born to women without husbands. That's right. um, it's worse than the African-American community. Um, and, uh, but this is what happens to a person or a nation that departs from God. God gives them That's over. Right to their lower nature. And I think we're seeing that in the mainstreaming of same-sex marriage. We're seeing it in cohabitation. We're seeing it in abortion. And yeah. all of these other, we're seeing it, you know, on a, in an economic sense, uh, with a $1.1 trillion budget in this next fiscal year and a $17 trillion mm -hmm. debt. Uh, so it's manifested in many ways. But, you know, everything's right on schedule. Not to worry. God's in control. Yes, he is. I want to quote you. Uh-oh. <laughs> Republicans are locked in an ideological prison. They need to recraft the argument for a new generation. It isn't compromising pro-life or other principles. I thought that was brilliant. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, we, we tend, uh, as I'm, I'm here tonight, I'm going to be with people probably close to my own age or certainly in my generation. And we tend to think that when we associate with other people like that, that everybody ought to feel as we do. But they don't. We have to win the argument in each generation. That's right. And uh, we have people now who are running the country, largely, who are products of the baby boom generation. Their children and grandchildren are those people. And I wrote a book some years ago called The Things That Matter Most about the cultural nuclear bomb that they dropped on this country. Mm -hmm. Cohabitation, mm -hmm. drugs, uh, all for pornography, all kinds of things. And we are still feeling the ripple effect of that, uh, of that explosion. So I think, uh, again, we have to earn the right to win the argument once again, and as importantly, we have to be consistent in our own lives. George Barna's research has shown that just as many Christians are divorcing That's right. as uh, non-Christians. So right. how can we talk about traditional marriage uh, as opposed to same-sex marriage when we're not keeping our own together? That's good. That's an excellent point. That's so true. You wrote in one of your columns, you... Um, got involved with Phil Robertson and the Duck Dynasty debate that was going on. Why did you feel that that was an important moment for the United States? Well, there's a double standard out there and has been for a long time when it comes to speech and expression. The left tells us that we who are conservatives and Christian have to tolerate everything. Bad language, nudity, yeah. burning of the American flag, because this is the price we pay for a healthy First Amendment. Right. But when somebody who is a believer expresses himself or herself on a on a critical social or political issue, uh, they are denounced and uh, there are calls for their uh, being fired or the show canceled and the rest. So I thought the whole Duck Dynasty brouhaha was uh, uh, emblematic of, uh, of that kind of uh, hypocrisy that we see in the country. Absolutely, absolutely. Glad to see they're back on with everybody still in place. With everyone yeah. still in place. They pray in Jesus' name at the end of the show. You know, it's an amazing thing. It is an amazing yeah. thing. <laughs> What's the legacy that you want to leave? Oh, I don't worry about legacies. Doesn't matter what anybody thinks about me on earth. Uh, I'll be forgotten after a generation or less, maybe after a few weeks. 
the only thing that matters is uh, the only thing that matters is whether my name's in the book of life and God remembers my name, and I have His blessed assurance that that's the case. Mm. That's all I need. Well said. Well said. All right, let me ask you just one last question. Entitlements, are we too far down the road to back this bus up? Hard to say, I'm not a prophet or the son of one, but uh, I hate the very word entitlement. The only thing I'm entitled to is liberty and the rest is up to me. I was in Singapore a few months ago and um, I found that they had an unemployment rate of about 2%. And I said, why is it so low? And I was told uh, by an official that we don't have any welfare here. If you're able-bodied and don't work, you don't eat. Now, they take care of people who are legitimately handicapped, mentally ill, you know, whatever. But uh, if you can work and don't work, there's no welfare for you. The left understands human nature. A lot of people would rather get a check than earn a check. The more people they hook to government, the more they will get votes for them and their policies. And so I think that's what we have to overcome. And I, I think that's what I'm trying to do in my book, What Works. I want to... I, instead of singing the song, We Shall Overcome, I want to show people how they can overcome. Mm -hmm. Now, women who are single mothers and need daycare for their kids so they can go to school and improve their life, I'm for paying for that. But the whole attitude ought to be, we want to help you, but we want to help you That's be right. self-sustaining. We don't want to help you by sending you a check for doing nothing, because that becomes uh, enabling. And that's the worst thing you can do for a country or for your kids. You've got to feel the consequences of refusing to do the right thing. But the problem in America anymore is that uh, we've obliterated the whole idea of the right and wrong thing to do. Boy, that is so true. When the church stands up for what they believe is is correct or, or the moral compass, we're called intolerant. Yeah. <laughs> um, if the Republicans say we need to, as you just said, let's get people off welf welfare, let's train them, let's get them back to work, then we're not caring. Yeah. So no matter what, the narrative always spins yeah. bad for us. Well, here, here's the way to handle that, and I've told this to governors and, and many other political leaders. Let's stop arguing with the left about who's more compassionate about the poor. Let, you know, the, the, I once was blind, but now I see is one of the great testimonies of all time. Let's start featuring people who used to be poor, who used to be brought up in what we call the wrong side of the tracks, who, uh, who, who grew up in dysfunctional homes, there's absent father, a you know, drug-addicted mother. And because they embraced the kinds of eternal truths that always produce positive results, uh, they have become better people as a result. That forces the left to defend poverty, enabling, and failure. And uh, I don't think they can do that. Hmm. We should be on the side of success, hope, prosperity, and uh, the future. Let the left have failure, the past, and addiction. That's a winnable issue for us, I think. Yeah, that's good. A voice of reason and sanity. I love it. What works? Cal's new book will be uh, coming out August 1st or April, April 1st. 1st. April, 1st. April 1st. So you need to get a copy. Common Sense Solution for a Stronger American. Thank yeah. you very much. Appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll be right back. I want to thank Cal Thomas for such a great interview and for taking the time to sit down with me. Jennifer, he was such a warm and he was funny. He was, he's so bright. He is brilliant. the voice of reason. Yes. Oh, yeah, he's brilliant. He, um, the book, What Works, will be out on April 1st. I can hardly wait to get my copy. Yeah. Um, isn't it interesting that if you could, if, he's thinking about the general welfare of the nation yeah. rather than which party. If we could get Washington to come into agreement with yeah. that. Well, that comes across. You, you hear his heart to say, what can we agree on? And, you know, yeah. Amos says that. And That's right. How what? can two walk together unless and they... see results and success unless we agree? That's exactly And, you know, right. what he said, it's common sense. But what I have found, especially in the last five years, is that common sense is not common. No, but you know, I think he, it's, a, it's an encouragement for all of us to hear him speak because we need to know that there are Christians yeah. in Washington. Yes. And there are, uh, when I interviewed a congressman from Ohio, he actually told me that they are, have Bible studies and prayer meetings all over Washington. Awesome. So while we hear from the press, yeah. um, the things that we, the press wants us to know, That's right. we're not hearing that there are many Christians that are praying for this nation and there are many Christians that are in Washington. And um, so it's encouraging. It I is. was so encouraged listening to him and his reasoning and um, he was just a voice of encouragement. Yeah. You know, when I was younger, my Mimi, which on 
shows past, I've told you how influential she was yeah. in my life, but she would always tell me, don't believe what the media tells you because it is very polarized, very secular, and, and very um, one slant. And she would, because there was an internet then, she would order magazines and periodicals and newsletters um, that gave a, a, a more fair perspective and, right. and broader approach. And then years ago, I had the opportunity to host uh, Judge Moore, um, who wanted to keep the, the Ten Commandments in the courthouse in Alabama. Right. And we, we, I hosted a press conference, and we invited about 30, 40 different news venues. And it was at that moment that I realized the most of the people that are writing our news in newspapers and who are writing copy behind the scenes are journalist majors that are college age. Right. And so how can they possibly know or be able to communicate accuracy um, because they're students and they're yeah. practicing their beliefs. And so that was very eye opening to me on that we have to be very guarded on what we hear and what we believe coming from media outlets. Well, and true, and the, the division of church and state has become, the line has been pushed so it's blurred now because actually what that really means is so simple. The government does not have the right to tell the people what our religion has to be or to say that we have a national religion, that we have freedom of religion. Yeah. But to take the Ten Commandments out or to stop praying, is all of those things have become ridiculous. Yeah. And they are just a tool that I believe that that is used against Christianity, yeah. but the gates of hell shall not, not prevail against right. the church. That's right. So, God's raising up anyway, the Anyway, it was just wonderful to interview him. I'm excited about his new book. He's actually written about 10 books, so there's a, a lot of information you can get out there about Cal, Cal Thomas, and I would suggest that you read his books. He has a column in USA Today. He writes with Bob Beckel, yeah. and uh, it's called Common Ground, which is, a, the, again, the voice of reason. Yeah. So, um, well, our, we're going to go to our announcer, has something for you, and then Jennifer and I will be back for prayer ministry in 30 seconds. If you would like to make a request for Gail to speak at your event, please contact her at gail at gailrossministries.com. And we're back with prayer ministry. You know, Jennifer and I were just talking, and she brought up a really good uh, point. Jennifer, why don't you say that to our viewers? Well, I loved how um, Cal talked about he thought he was a Christian, that he went to church on Sunday, and his parents, you know. Occasionally. Uh, occasionally. But then. There was no Bible reading. There right, was no prayer. Right. And the, and really, that then and then when he started going to a Bible study and listening to people talk about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Right. And, you know, that touched my heart because how many in the American culture say, you know, Barna, do you believe in God? Yes. Do you go to church? Yes. See any Christians, Christmas, Christmas and Easter. Right. But, but that doesn't make you a Christian. It doesn't no. make you a Christ follower. No, and we've got a lot of churchgoers, but I wonder how many people out there would really say they have a personal, personal relationship, relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, I think that you can ask people, are you in a religion? Yes, but are, are you in a relationship yeah. with Christ? You know, this may be your opportunity yeah. right now. You may have tuned into this channel, and maybe you've never, ever asked Jesus to come into your heart and be the Lord of your life. This would be the opportunity, and it starts with just a simple prayer. Yes. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. It's an act of confession. Yes. And Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father. Yes. It's such an exciting decision, and I believe you're watching this program for a reason today. Yeah. So all you have to do, friend, if you would just say this simple prayer, just say, Jesus, I want you to come into my heart. I want you to be yeah. the Lord of my life. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I want to walk in my divine destiny. And if you do that, friend, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And that's exactly what Cal Thomas was saying. And, you know, they're rejoicing in heaven yes. right now if you yes. said that prayer. And Jennifer yes. and I are rejoicing yes, with are. you because it is the best decision that you yes. will ever make. And then you can come boldly into that that's throne right. of grace and obtain grace and mercy in your time of need. And, Jennifer, we have some people who have sent in prayer requests. 
they have a need right now and they know their source they know that prayer is the answer that God hears our prayers but we need to pray for Mason Mason is a little toddler and they have found a tumor in his liver and they believe that it might be cancerous and his grandparents are asking for prayer for him Eric needs prayer Dominique needs prayer for cancer Beth needs prayer for cancer Bob I, I get so many Bob we want to pray for your eyes you've got glaucoma but you know what the name of Jesus yes. is the name above every name yes. above glaucoma above cancer yes. so Jennifer and I are going to put our faith together the Bible yes. says we're to agree as touching anything on earth it shall be done by my father in heaven so we're going to pray for you. Father, we just thank, thank you, you for these precious saints who sent in their prayer requests. Mm -hmm. But for all those that are watching, even today, Lord, I pray for healing. I thank you, Lord, that your word says you sent your word and healed us and yes. delivered us from destruction. Your word tells us not only in Isaiah, but in the New Testament and First Peter, that by every stripe on Jesus' back, we were healed yes. and made whole. So, Father, I thank you for that healing. I thank you that your word says no evil shall be followed, us, no plague come yes, near our dwelling, Jesus. that you deliver us from the snare of the fowler and the deadly pestilence and that pestilence is anything virulent and virulent is anything malignant so father I come against cancer yes, in the name in of Jesus, Jesus. Name. I come against glaucoma in, in the Jesus name of Jesus name. I come against that mass and that baby's liver in yes, Jesus God, name I speak healing. life and healing yes. and wholeness in Jesus name we pray amen, amen. and amen. amen wow there's a wonderful anointing in here Jen uh, Jennifer do you feel a prophetic utterance coming at all just God is healing someone prophetically you feel I just feel like God's recreating organs mm. that he's recreating you know there's things the enemy's not creative God is God and is whatever report you've gotten that there's something in your body that can't be fixed God is a creative God and Amen. he can recreate a liver a pancreas he can That's recreate right. a heart valve he can recreate nerves muscle joints sinews and um, I just pray that hope will rise in your heart and that you will have that assurance the word never returns void and God desires to heal you he is the great physician he is the ultimate doctor that's right in Psalms 34 19 reads many of the afflictions of the righteous but God delivers us out of them all, all all just stand on God's word find healing scriptures read them over and over speak them so that your faith is renewed in God's word and and trust God you have to believe in God's word I have a speaking engagement on April 6th at Integrity Church in Naples if you're in the Naples area I'd love to have you come and join us it's at 6 p.m. you can go to my website and find out more information also you can go to my website and order my new book from glimpses to hope they also carry it in Fort Myers at the Christian Life Bookstore and Trader Rick's in the bell tower that supplies all my clothes for the program. I want to thank you that stopped me when you're out and tell me you enjoy the program. Jennifer and I did a program just a couple of weeks ago on healing and Jennifer, so many people were touched by that yeah, program. So I want to thank you and those who send in donations. We're so appreciative of that. That's just such a blessing to us. So remember that your victory starts in the Word of God. Thank you, Jennifer, for Absolutely. being on the program it's a privilege. with me. Thank you. I love having you here. Your victory starts in the Word of God, and your testimony of triumph can start today. God bless you and keep you. We'll see you next time.